I'm Ian, and I'm going to show you some basic operation of the Coleman 263BH, starting right here with the front tongue jack. This one is super simple to use. You'll have a rocker switch right here. You will do this to retract the tongue, which of course will lower the RV, or the bottom, which extends the tongue, therefore raising the RV. You also see a rocker switch right next to that. That will be your light at night. Behind that are your two propane tanks. The Coleman 263BH is equipped with 20 pound tanks. Now, to show you this, I'm just going to remove the cover, which you will see has a little bungee down here. So you can take that off like so if you need the cover removed. And that'll expose our two tanks. So what you'll notice is right up here, there's a little arrow and this says supply. So that is what tank you're currently using. Um, some people will tell you you can put it in the center and draw off both tanks and that is true. I don't recommend it. I recommend using one side and then the other. The reason being, once one tank is empty, you know that you still have half of your propane left. Obviously, once it is here, you will open that propane up and that will feed your camper with the propane. So if you need to operate uh, your furnace, sometimes a refrigerator, water heater, things like that, uh, a lot of those appliances will run off your propane. Coming around to the side, uh, this of course will be your pass through. Underneath that, these are your stabilizer jacks. Now this one is equipped with the PSX1 power stabilizer jacks from Lippert Components. And very similar to our power tongue jack, has a rocker switch. You push a button to extend those stabilizer jacks. Now the way this works is it will drop one down. Once it touches and hits the ground, it will then drop the other one. You can see it's slowly starting to move right now. Um, I just want you to bear in mind, folks, this is not a leveling system. It is pure for purely for stabilization. If you try to level the camper out with those, you will break them. So please do not do that. You will want to use blocks underneath your tires to level the camper. These will make it so your camper doesn't move around as much as you're walking around inside. Steps are a little bit different than what you've probably seen in the past, and that's because they have gone with the solid step system. It mounts right here in the doorway. You will see it attaches there. You have this lever. You can pull this lever either way. That will allow these stairs to drop freely, just like so. You will also notice that you have these pins. You're able to see those. If you remove these pins, that will allow you to adjust the feet. You want to make sure you adjust the feet properly to your campsite. And also that this lip right here isn't too high because what will happen is if your legs are too long and it's like this, when you go to shut the door, you'll damage the bottom of your door. So you want that sitting fairly flush uh, and that way you'll have a, a good perspective of where your steps should be. Making my back a little bit further, power awning up top. I'll get to that when we get inside as far as operation. You have some speakers there as well. And again, I'll touch on those inside. If you're going somewhere, you're not gonna have water hookup. You'll wanna make sure you fill the fresh water tank either before or if you have a place to fill it at the campground, you can do it there too. Some people do recommend putting a little bit of water in the tank when you travel. That is completely up to you. Uh, sometimes it can help with load balance issues depending on where your tank is located. But this will be a freshwater fill. It is a gravity fill. Once that is filled up, it will just start to pour out. You'll want to keep an eye on it because generally the rate that is going in it is faster than it will come out. So you can use a tank monitoring panel inside to see how full the fresh tank is when it starts getting close to full. Come out here. Once it starts overflowing, take it out. You're good to go. This is your suburban six gallon water heater. This is your suburban furnace right there. Uh, make your way back a little bit further is the black tank flush. This is to wash out your black tank when you're done camping. What you wanna do is make sure you have the black tank valve open when you are using this. Otherwise it can fill up that black tank if you're not paying attention. You can dump your whole black tank out, cause a bunch of damage. We don't want that to happen. Uh, in fact, it will tell you right here that the termination valve has to be open. So there is a nice little reminder on there. I'll show you where that termination valve is in just a moment. Making our way around to the back here and cross to the other side. Right over here is your 30 amp power. So what you'll do, you'll open this up, take this cord out, you'll take it extended all the way, plug it into the post, turn on the breaker to make sure you have power, and then you'll just close it down just like this. That way the cord sticks out uh, pretty simple. And then right down here is your termination. So um, as I mentioned, with your termination, this one is really nice on the 263 because you will see that the tanks are accurately color coded. The gray valves for your gray tank, the black for your black tank. You generally, when you are camping, want your valves to be closed just like this. The reason being, if your black tank is open, when you go to flush the toilet, all the water will drain out, but a lot of times the solids will stick in there. That's not what you want. So keep them both closed when they start to fill up, drain your black tank first, then pull the gray tank just to help wash everything else out. Pretty much wraps it up out here. Let's go take a look inside. 
So as soon as you come inside, you'll see right here in the cabinets is your control panel. Uh, this one's pretty simple to use. You will see your tanks will be located right here as well as your batteries. This is your tank monitoring panel. Push the battery, shows us where we're at. Same thing with the tanks and you will see they are empty just as they should be because this one has not been used. Your power awning will be right next to that. So you'll see it says retract and extend. Pretty self-explanatory. Push it down and hold it to extend it. Then same thing to retract it back up. There are lights on that awning. That will be the exterior light button. You flip that on and that will light up those LEDs. You also see a switch for interior lights. Now when I turn this off, what you'll notice is this is mainly just the primary ceiling lights. All these other lights in the slide as well as the kitchen operate independently and to use those as just a button right here in the center to turn those on and off. Coming back up, uh, last two things, one, I guess three, one will be your water pump. So if you fill up the fresh tank because you don't have city water, that's when you wanna use your water pump. Flip that switch on, you will hear the system pressurize, and then it will stop until you basically turn on water somewhere, and then the pump will run to repressurize the system. Right next to that is our water heater. This one does run off propane. Uh, flip that on. This is a DSI, or direct spark ignition water heater on that one. Flip it on, it will fire up. You'll be good to go. You'll have hot water uh, pretty quickly. And as I said, that one is six gallons, so not super long showers, folks. Uh, slide room. This one makes it even easier. Rather than retract and extend, it just says in and out. Can't mess that one up. Touch a button to, to have it go out and push and hold this one to have it come back in. Uh, one thing I do recommend with slides, whenever you're moving slides, whether it's this camp or any other, just make sure that all of your cabinet doors are shut. Uh, moving into the kitchen, uh, you have your faucet here. This is pretty simple. Forward is hot, back is cold. For your cooktop, this one is a three burner cooktop. This folds up and sits on the back just like that. It does stop right there, which is nice. Uh, to operate the burners, you will simply flip this switch, right? You'll rotate it, and then you have a sparker right there, and that will turn that on. You also have a sparker in your oven, which is really nice. So same thing, you're gonna turn the gas on. You can see a little flame on the knobs right here. You're just gonna boom, flip that. It will fire up and you are good to go. Make way over a little bit further is the refrigerator. This is your travel lock. Anytime you move, you want that closed. Open it up just like so if you need to get into her. This one is 12 volts, so as you can see, it is running. It is cooling. Uh, right here is your control. This is your thermostat. Simply push the button to set it, or you will see if you push and hold it for 10 seconds, that will turn it on and off. That is going to be important. If you're storing your camper for any significant amount of time, you still want power in here, but don't need the fridge, you'll want to push and hold that so it's not draining down your batteries. Thermostat will be located right here. This will run both the AC as well as the furnace. You'll push this button. You can see that is the fan. Then it goes to cool. Then it goes to furnace. And if you hit it one more time, it goes off. The increments for temperature are there to the right. Uh, pretty simple and easy to use. For the bathroom, the only thing I really want to talk about in here is the toilet. And I'm not even going to go in there. I'll just talk about it. So foot flush lever. You kind of push it down a little bit and that will fill the bowl up with water. Then if you push it down all the way, that will flush the toilet. In the back here, there is storage underneath this one. You'll see a handle. Just kind of want to show you where that is located. Very easy to get to that. And then lastly, right up front, we have the entertainment center. So your TV will go here. This is where your um, antenna booster is, as well as Wi-Fi if you have that capability. Underneath is the fireplace. This one does need 120 to run. You will have 12 volt and 120 in this RV. So if you have shore power, uh, you will just turn it on right there. And then your multimedia center is located here that does control the speakers in here as well as outside. The last thing I wanna hit on, because I missed it, is right over here, and that is your fuse panel. If we pop this guy open, you'll see right over to the left, you will have your uh, 120 volt, your AC over to the side of your 12 volt or your DC there, all the fuses as well as the breakers associated with that if you need to troubleshoot anything electrical. And speaking of troubleshooting folks, uh, if you're looking for more depth information on anything I covered here or some uh, different troubleshooting tips, make sure you check out our video library uh, brought to you by Camping World and Good Sand to try to make camping fun and easy. Thanks for watching, folks, and more importantly than anything, get out there and have a good time.